Hey Packet Heads, welcome back and now we are on lesson three of the Wireshark Masterclass. Now in this lesson what we're going to do is take a look at the command line and learn how to capture using command line tools. Now there's some environments where it's a lot easier to use the command line to capture rather than the user interface within Wireshark. So get out that command line and let's capture some packets. Okay, so in this lesson we're going to talk about the command line tools. Now, when you install Wireshark, you also install several tools. And we're going to progressively talk about those as we go forward in our course. So things like Merge Cap, uh, Edit Cap, T Shark. But in this case, we're going to talk about how to capture using either Dump Cap or TCP Dump. Now, maybe in the past we've captured off of a firewall or a load balancer using one of these types of tools. And now we're going to learn how to do it from our local machine. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to access the command line tools within a command prompt or within your terminal, depending on your operating system. I'm just gonna show you how to do it on Windows first, and then we're gonna flip over to Mac and show you, show you it there. So on Windows, uh, if we just come into our search, we're just gonna type in, uh, we can just select command prompt or type in CMD and we'll be able to find it. Now, just right off the bat, if you start typing in something like T-Shark or uh, Dump Cap, now unless you actually have the Wireshark directory as a part of your path, this tool won't work right off the bat. You're going to have to add the Wireshark directory as a part of the path. Now, there's a handful of ways to do that, but just to really understand this principle, I'm just going to back up a few directories, and I'm going to go into my program files, and then I'm going to go into Wireshark, if I can type it. Okay, so within Wireshark, there I actually have my command line tools. So there I'm gonna see T Shark, and I'm gonna come in here, I can see a handful of other ones that I can actually use, Merge Cap, uh, and so on. So this is where they actually are located. So from here, I would be able to do Dump Cap, uh, TCP Dump, and, and all, all of the command line tools that get installed with Wireshark are gonna be located here. So it's always a good idea to add this to your path environment variable. In fact, if I just print mine out, path, you can actually see here on mine, if I come down here, it's right here. So C program files Wireshark. What that does is it means that I can run those tools from anywhere within my command prompt, no matter where I'm at. All right, so to do that, a simple way, there's a handful of ways you can Google them, find your favorite way. But a simple way to do that, if I just jump down to my little search tool if I go to the control panel and I'm going to come into my system settings I'm going to go to advanced system settings and I'm going to come down to environment variables here I'm going to see path all right so then I can edit and this is where I can add so I can say new and let's go ahead and and browse this is where I can say new and this is where I can browse and this is where I can come in and find my Wireshark directory. That will add that path to my environment variable, so then I should be able to use those tools from anywhere uh, that I am within my command prompt. Okay, so that's how I can access the command line tools within the Windows 10 environment. But how about on a Mac? Now, on a Mac, the actual location that these tools are typically installed. Uh, you can see it here, this location is applications, Wireshark, app, contents, Mac OS. So what I wanna do is I also wanna add that to my path. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put this down in the description below, you can see this. To come into my terminal, I can just add this as a temporary addition to my path. And what that will do is that will allow me to run the command line tools from anywhere within this terminal. But as soon as I turn the terminal off, then I'm gonna to have to uh, do this every single time. So to add this as a permanent path environment variable, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and link to another article that will show you how to do that on a permanent basis if you're on a Mac system. So now that we know how to actually access the command line tools, let's go ahead and get busy using them. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up here. I'm on a Mac system. So I'm gonna open up my terminal. So first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say dump cap. Dash H. Now the nice thing about this is we can see some of the options that we have available, uh, things that we may have also seen within the Wireshark analyzer. So here I have dash I, that's one that I wanna make sure that I use to 
tell the system what interface I want to capture from. Now here also we see snap length, and that's how we can tell the system how much of the frame do we want to capture. Also we have buffer size, and we also have list interfaces, uh, several different things. So basically, let's just keep this very simple. So I'm just going to start over, and what I'm going to do is just go to dump cap. And to get a list of my interfaces, I'm just going to do dash capital D. And what that does is it lists out all the interfaces on my system. So rather than guess at the index number that's used for those interfaces, now I can actually see which one is assigned. So here I can see EN0, that's my Wi-Fi interface. Down below, if I had a Thunderbolt interface connected to an actual physical cable, there down there I might use interface number 13, 14, 15. So this will show you all of the interfaces and you can select which one you want to capture from. So for me, just to test this, what I'm going to do is dump cap dash I, that's interface, and I'm just going to say one. That's my Wi-Fi interface. So I just hit enter and it shows me, okay, Chris, you nailed it. Capturing on Wi-Fi, EN0, and this is the location, just a temp folder where I'm saving this data. All right, so I'm just going to say control C just to stop that capture. Now I know that I've got the right interface that I want to use. The next thing that I want to do is I want to tell dump cap where to save the data. That temp folder isn't something that I'm going to go digging around through in my system. So what I want to do is I'm just going to hit the up arrow. Okay, so dump cap dash I, the first interface. Now I'm going to do dash W, so to write. Now where do I want to write? I'm just going to say to users, Chris. Now I've got a data folder, and I'm just going to name this sample.pcapng. All right, so now I've told dumpcap, save off this interface and save in this location. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm just going to hit that. And if I bring up my finder here, this is where I can see that I'm capturing and I'm saving to that sample trace file. Now this will keep running, and that sample trace file will grow on until I stop this capture. Now, let's just say I want to take advantage of a ring buffer, but I want to do it from the command line. We learned about ring buffers in the last lesson. So let's go ahead and see how we can, instead of capturing one large packet capture off the command line, how can we break it up into smaller pieces? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Now this gets a little bit long as far as uh, an actual single command, so it can be tough to remember all the switches. That's why don't be afraid to go ahead and go back to dumpcap-h, and this is where we can start to see some of the options that we have to use within the system. So after I bring up my help again, now I want to take a look at the small b switch. So I've got dash b ring buffer options. So this is where I can tell the system, do I want how many files, uh, what's the file size of each one of these, and remember that those file sizes are in kilobytes, all right, and the files can be a number of files. All right, so let's go ahead and create a dump cap ring buffer, all right, so I'm just going to up arrow until I bring my old command back, so dash i, that's uh, my Wi-Fi interface, and here I'm writing to this location on my system. But this time what I want to do is I want to do dash B, and what I'm going to do is first file size. Okay, and then I'm going to do colon, and what I want to say here is how large do I want those trace files to be in kilobytes. So if I just put 100, that means it's going to save 100 kilobyte PCAPs. So that's pretty small, right? So I might want to up that a little bit. If I add one more zero, that's a meg. Add one more zero, that's 10 meg. Add one more zero, that's 100 meg. All right, so this is going to be a 100 megabyte PCAP. Now, in our lesson last week, we talked about using 500 meg PCAPs. Oops, I put six. Let me back that out. There's five. So right there, that's how I tell it. I want 500 megabyte PCAPs. And how many of them do I want? I'm going to use another dash B. And this time I'm going to say files. So how many do I want in my ring buffer? Let's just say for starters, 10. So what this does is it's going to save 10 total 500 megabyte files. And on the 11th one, it's going to go back and overwrite the first one, and then overwrite the second one. So I'll only ever have 10 in total. So just looking at that, that looks good. So I'm just going to say, okay. 
And you'll notice over here on the left in my data folder, this is where I have my first PCAP that's starting and then it's going to be collecting data. Once it hits 500, then I'll see sample number two in the time and date stamp. Then I'll see sample number three, time and date stamp, sample four and so on. Once I hit 10, then I'll see 11 and it'll overwrite number one. So keep in mind, if you're in a high throughput, high bandwidth environment, you might want to use larger PCAPs and you might want to have more in your ring buffer just so you can make sure to keep up with the ingress data. So this is how you capture on the command line. Now, why would we want to use the command line instead of the user interface? Well, sometimes we're on the command line a bit more and we like to use this type of tool to use our packet captures to bring in that data. Also, Wireshark in the user interface, it's a heavier way to capture. Right, so it has a lot more going on. We might not be able to keep up with larger data rates coming into our system with the user interface. So just to make sure, just this is the most raw way that you can collect packets into your analyzer. So I hope this was a useful tip for you. Thanks for stopping by at the Wireshark Masterclass Lesson 3, and I'll see you on another video.